Welcome to this week's Cyper Conversation brought to you by Periton. My name is Janessa Palmieri, and on behalf of Periton, we are proud to partner with Cyper to bring you these weekly conversations. I am also here with Brianna, who is a cyber operations major at DSU. She will be facilitating the Q&A towards the end of the conversation. For those of you who are joining us today, DSU um, and CyPER is a program that works to motivate, empower, and educate young women in cybersecurity. Just a reminder, at any point during the program, you can ask a question via the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. I am very honored to introduce today's speaker, Ritu Chadha. Ritu is a senior research director at Periton Labs, where she leads the machine learning and data analytics research department. Ritu, thank you for being here today. Thank you so much, Janessa. I'm really happy to be here today and get the chance to talk to all of you. So I'm going to try to share my slides. Now I have a few slides uh, just talking a little bit about my background, what I've been um, working on. And uh, so if you just give me a second and let me know if you can see the slides. OK, great. I got a thumbs up. So I wanted to start with just a little bit about myself. Uh, I have a PhD in computer science from the University of North Carolina, and I've been working at Periton Labs for over 29 years, which uh, is uh, seems like a lifetime. I'm, it's longer than the lifetime of most of you <laughs> attending this call, I'm sure. Uh, but it's been a really fun journey, and uh, it doesn't feel like uh, I've been working on the same thing for 29 years, just because this field of the technologies that we've been work I've been working on change so much and uh, you're always learning something new. So, uh, and also Periton Labs uh, wasn't always Periton Labs. So it's a relatively new uh, company. And uh, I've, I've been in Periton Labs as well as its predecessors, which include uh, Bell Labs. Um, maybe some of you have heard of Bell Labs one of the premier institutions in this country uh, a long time ago. And uh, so really uh, there's re a culture of research and innovation, sort of that's the uh, you know, cross-cutting theme across all of the work that, that we've been doing over the years. Uh, so I have expertise in cybersecurity as well as machine learning, networking. And um, I, I used to teach at Rutgers for a couple of years as an adjunct professor. Um, so just some fun facts about myself. Uh, I lived in five countries on three different continents before the age of eight and speak five languages. Uh, I used to play chess a long time ago, and uh, I have uh, a husband and a daughter. My daughter also started her PhD in computer science. So I get a lot of uh, jokes about that. Um, so now uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I do. Uh, Cybersecurity, I guess you were expecting that, right? <laughs> but also AI and machine learning, uh, networking, modeling and simulation, and sort of, you know, cloud edge computing. So I, I have all of these, you know, this, this big Venn diagram sort of because all of these things are interrelated. And I'm going to come back to this a little bit later, but um, so first I'm gonna just talk about you know, some problems in cybersecurity and you're pro probably familiar with all of these, right? So these are just things that you may have read about in the press. Uh, some are a little older than others. So you know, this, this uh, article headline talks about the Mirai botnet, which you may have heard about. Uh, this was in the news about uh, five years ago. So this was uh, the largest uh, distributed denial of service attack of its kind at the time, which really did disrupt the internet. And uh, it was interesting because it was basically using uh, these devices from the, the Internet of Things or IoT devices to launch a distributed denial of service attack on uh, DNS services. Um, Dis very uh, disruptive, obviously, because the DNS underlies all of um, you know our internet services. It's essential to to keeping the services that we depend on up and running. And uh, you know, so why was it possible? Well, because you know, it, people realized that these IoT devices that um, that we all depend on, you know, your smart cameras and uh, uh, smart toasters, what have you. 
uh, they typically are shipped from the factory with these default passwords. And you know, when you install them in your home, you don't always remember to change the password. And so people can then look around for these, um, these devices on the internet, which may have default passwords and then use them to do whatever they want, which in this case was this, this attack. Um, you've probably all heard of the solar winds attack much more recent, you know, I see people nodding. So, uh, yeah, so about a year ago, you know, we started hearing about this and, uh, I mean, the interesting thing is, in spite of all of the efforts that we're putting and all the money we're pouring into cybersecurity, it took uh, many, many months for us to even realize that this attack was, you know, was underway and that um, people's computers had been penetrated using these techniques, which is it's, uh, you know, basically a supply chain attack that was uh, delivered through the SolarWinds platform. And, uh, so the scary thing is, you know, I mean, we think that we we have all these tools. We we feel that we're you know we're taking all the precautions we need to protect ourselves. But uh, I mean, you know, these attacks keep happening, and their sophistication is amazing. I mean, um, you know, in one press report, it said that probably around one thousand people uh, worked on this, uh, you know, on this. Uh, the software re required to realize this attack. It was extremely sophisticated, very interesting. I mean, I'm not, you know, there's no time to go into the details here, but uh, very interesting in terms of the, uh, the precautions that the people took to make sure that this attack went undetected because we do have all these very sophisticated tools to help us detect such attacks. Uh, so, you know, uh, there's a lot of work to be done. That's basically the takeaway here. Uh, I thought I'll also talk a little bit about, you know, network related attacks. So everybody here has a cell phone. Um, and so, you know, your cell phones are obviously also very vulnerable to attacks. Um, you, you may have heard about stingrays and, and the attacks that people perform using them. So string, stingrays are basically these um, devices that mimic cell towers. So what they're trying to do is fool your cell phone into thinking that it's talking to a cell tower when in, in reality, it's talking to the Stingray device. And then the Stingray device, you know, can do things like snoop on your location and, uh, you know, get all kinds of metadata about the calls that you're making and so on. So, um, you know, this, this article is about three years old, uh, but, you know, these problems haven't gone away. So here's a more recent article um, which again talks about these kinds of attacks. And you know, you might think, well, with 5G, we've figured out how to fix the problem, but yeah, I guess not, because <laughs> this article came out about three months ago and it talks about you know 5G and uh, this this kind of stingray surveillance still being possible. So again, you know, a lot of work to be done uh, in in protecting us from all kinds of possible attacks and surveillance. So I'm coming back now to the picture I showed you before. So, you know, uh, what do all, what, what, what's the work to be done here and what are all these fields? What do they have to do with each other? So cyber vulnerabilities, well, they're about how do you, you know, how do you find the vulnerabilities that, uh, that exist? What's the attack surface? How do you protect against these things? Uh, networking here, we need to look at the, the protocols that we use in our networks, what are their vulnerabilities? How do you make sure that you know you're you're addressing those? So and and you know no, uh, I mean cybersecurity and networking are so closely tied together that you know sometimes the, the difference the, the boundary becomes a fuzzy between them. So AI and machine learning, well you know these are technologies that are very widely applicable, but specifically in the area of cybersecurity, you know, it's all about how do you um, detect unknown problems, right? You can, if you know what you're looking for, then you can, you can write software and it will find uh, the problems you're looking for. The problem is, you know, there are all of these very sophisticated adversaries out there that are developing new types of attacks. So how do you, how are you going to find them if you don't even know what you're looking for? And that's where techniques like AI and machine learning come in, where you know you, you try to uh, basically you know detect anomalies, for example. And of course, 
um, you know, there's there's no real solution yet. So this is again wide open and a very a very interesting techniques um, that can be developed and applied to the problems that we see in cybersecurity. Uh, modeling and simulation. What does that have to do with anything? Well, you know, when you're trying to um, figure out whether your networks are secure, uh, whether your whole, your um, devices are protected against different types of malware. If you want to see how different types of malware and different defenses impact uh, the, your, your, your security, um, how do you try all of this out without actually you know, going and breaking everything? So you need an environment where you can model the devices, model the threats, and simulate what happens. And that's where modeling and simulation um, capabilities come in. And then, of course, you know, you need compute to run all this, right? So that's sort of the, the, the story. And why am I talking about all this? It's really because, um, you know, I just wanted to emphasize that no matter what your interests are, whether they lie in, you know, a specific area of cyber or whether you want to explore like AI yeah, machine learning or networking or, you know, more broad um, interests, uh, there's really room for everything in here because all of these technologies are so related and I mean, nobody's going to be an expert in everything, but we do need experts in all of these areas. And so I really want to encourage all of you to, you know, think broadly and, you know, find the things that you're passionate about. And, um, and there are lots and lots of problems to be solved. And I'm sure that uh, everybody can contribute. So that's that's basically all I had to say. And so uh, I guess time for questions. I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, thank you, uh, Ritu, for your um, for being on Cyber Conversations. Uh, just a reminder that if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A section located at the bottom of your screen. So my first question for you is, um, what, um, what is your typical day of work like? That's a great question. Yeah, my daughter used to ask me that. She's like, what do you do at work all day? Um, so, uh, I, so I spend a lot of time, um, you know, first I, I run projects. Uh, secondly, I, I try to think about, you know, what, um, what we should be doing, how we should be positioning ourselves for uh, for the future, so what we could be doing better, uh, the customers who have maybe have problems that we either aren't yet addressing, or you know maybe the customers are not yet aware they have these problems, so we want to be able to you know discuss it with them and pitch solutions. So it's it's um, sort of a mix of executing on existing projects as well as you know trying to. Uh, position us and, and direct us uh, in terms of what we should be doing. And I know that's that's kind of a, you know, uh, a little vague because it doesn't talk about specifics of, of what I do, but it, the projects we have are kind of, uh, they span cybersecurity, they span networking, all of the areas that I just showed in my slides, basically, you know, um, um, modeling and simulation, uh, networking, cyber, AI, machine learning, edge computing, all of those. And so we have projects in all of those. And no, I don't work on every single one of them, but uh, so about, I'm very fortunate to have a wonderful team of people working with me. So uh, we have about 55 people in my department. And uh, so just, you know, working with them and I learn a lot from them and uh, uh, it's really a, a great environment to work in. That's interesting. Yeah, we definitely do learn a lot with working in a team. I have a question from Janessa. And so her question is, what is your favorite area to work in cybersecurity, cyber networking, AI, or simulation? <laughs> yeah, that, that, uh, yeah I, am I allowed to say all of them? <laughs> I, I don't know, it's hard to pick one specific uh, favorite area. Maybe I can talk about a recent uh, uh, interest, uh, which is in the area of adversarial machine learning. So um, if, if uh, you've spent any time, uh, you know, uh, studying machine learning or maybe even reading about, you may know that 
Um, there's been a lot of talk about people attacking machine learning models. So uh, an example that you see a lot in the press is uh, you have machine learning models that are used for computer vision. So uh, think about um, a model that recognizes objects in images. So the canonical example that you see of adversarial machine learning is how you start with a picture of a panda and you have a model that, you know, you, you show the picture of the panda to the, to the model and it correctly identifies it as a panda. And then you run your adversarial machine learning techniques on that image and it produces another image, which to the human eye looks identical to the previous one. So you're like, yeah, that's still the panda. But when you present it to the machine learning model, it, sa it says it's a gibbon or a monkey. And so, so basically by adding this imperceptible amount of noise to the image, the machine learning model got completely fooled. Whereas for humans, it's like you don't even see the difference. So that's an area, uh, that's, that's an example in, in the field of machine vision. But the same thing can happen, happen with models that are um, basically cyber sensors. So, you know, uh, there are machine learning is being used pretty heavily for detecting different types of cyber intrusions. And so the way they're trained is they're trained on, you know, data that's collected from the network, from hosts, et cetera. And uh, we've found that if you tweak um, the inputs in certain ways, so for example, uh, you, you, you tweak the malware in ways that um, still maintain the malicious nature of the malware, but can bypass the, the detector, um, you know, you have a really powerful attack because uh, you, you are learning to bypass the defenses that are out there. So, um, so that's, you know, one of the, the cool things I think that, uh, you know, uh, one of my favorite projects recently. Oh, that's nice. Um, and then I have another question uh, from YL. How did you get into cyber? Um, yeah, so I, I, I would say it kind of happened along the way. <laughs> so uh, when I got my PhD, it was actually in the area of symbolic logic in AI. And so like a far cry from cybersecurity, um, really had never taken any classes in, in the field. And uh, then I started work um, at Belcor at that time, that was the name of the company. And uh, so it was very focused on telecommunications and that became, you know, networking. And then from networking, it became about, well, so you need to secure these networks. And so it kind of evolved into um, cybersecurity just by the nature of working on, you know, networking and the internet and uh, also, um, you know, Periton, our, our business is focused on, um, you know, mostly uh, government funded work. And so we sort of try to solve the pressing problems that um, affect national security. And so, you know, cybersecurity is one of the important uh, ones. And that's how I got into this area. Uh, but also, you know, um, since we tried to work on um, you know, R&D and innovation. Um, cybersecurity is an area where a lot of innovation is required and so is machine learning and so is the intersection of these. And so that's how, you know, kind of, it's, it's not one thing that brought me to working in cybersecurity, but sort of, you know, some of it just happens. Some of it is, well, if the world evolves and you evolve along with it. <laughs> That is very interesting how you got into um, cybersecurity. Um, and then I have another question from Naol. What was the best advice you were given? <laughs> best advice I was given. Wow, that's a hard one. Uh, um, I mean, I, I think the best advice I was given is, um, you know, just, just to to work on interesting problems and, and, you know, just try to have impact on, um, you know, on your, on the problems that, problem space that you're working on. So really just like be curious. That was, that was the advice, right? You know, just 
don't worry too much about everything else. Everything else will be fine, but you know, be curious and always be learning. And I, I think that's um, something that I've tried to keep doing and, uh, uh, you know, um, keep learning and uh, evolving as technology evolves because it does evolve very fast. Yeah, it definitely evolves very fast. <laughs> um, and then uh, I have another question from Janessa. What is the coolest AI tool you have worked with? The coolest AI tool? Uh, I mean, I, I yeah, that's... Uh, so I, I, I wouldn't say that... Uh, okay, that, that's, that's a good... Good uh, question. Uh, maybe I can talk about the coolest project. So uh, we we had one project where we were working on the area of um, automating dog fighting. So uh, if I wasn't familiar with the term, so maybe some of you aren't either. But it's basically you know one on one versus one aerial combat. That's a dog fight in colloquial terms. And so the project was, how do you use reinforcement learning to, uh, to um, allow um, a fighter plane to you know, just autonomously uh, engage in this 1v1 kind of aerial combat? Um, so, it, and it's, you know, it's, it's harder than you think. I mean, when we first started off, we realized even just getting the plane to fly in a straight line was challenging because there's so many controls. And, uh, you know, so to get uh, an agent to learn how to do that on its own was, was very challenging. So that's, you know, maybe that's one of the, the most exciting. And I think reinforcement learning is uh, the, the most exciting AI field uh, for me, just because I think it's, uh, it really mimics the process of human learning the, the most closely. Uh, uh, across all of the areas I've looked at. So that's, that's you know, one project. Oh, that is very interesting. Um, and then what is the coolest thing that you have ever done? It can be anything. <laughs> oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I've, done, I've done anything cool. <laughs> um, what's the coolest thing? I don't know, going to Bora Bora, does that count? <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a, a, the the coolest place to visit. You you land uh, on a little island, and then um, you know you have to take a boat to go anywhere else, like even to your hotel or whatever. So I thought that was cool. Sorry, I knew I know it was supposed to be work related, but uh... <laughs> no, it could be anything. So you're okay. good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. And then uh, what would you like your lasting impact to be? Um, my lasting impact. Uh, um, yeah, I, I mean, if I can, if I can make any uh, difference to, um, you know, the outcome of, of um, projects or be able to point to something and say, you know, if I hadn't been there, this wouldn't have happened. I think that's, you know, that. To me, that would be that would be something cool. Awesome. Um, and then um, this is the last question that I have. Um, what advice would you give to all the young people watching this session? Okay. Well, I mean, the advice I would give is um, just you know do something that you like to do, and um, I think that. Liking something comes with time. So it's not going to be love at first sight. Um, it, it, I, I feel that the more you work on something, the better you become at it. And the, the, the fact of being good at something also makes you like it. So I think you have to always give something time before you can determine whether or not you're gonna like it. So, um, so give it some time and, you know, like just, go deep into something and, and see if you like it. Um, that's, you know, that's the approach I would use. So, all right. yeah. <laughs> so I do wish everyone all the best. And, you know, um, there, there's so many 
fun things to be done out there in the field of cybersecurity, or if you don't choose to go into cybersecurity out there just in technology or whatever other field. And uh, I think the most important thing is to find something that you really enjoy doing. And, uh, you know, then like work is going to be fun. <laughs> Yeah, um, that was all the time we have for questions. Uh, thank you too for your time. Um, we all learned a lot from you. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. This was a lot of fun. I wish all yeah. the best. For you too, that was awesome. I love the advice that you gave that you said you've been working in research for what you said, 29, 29 almost 30 years now and you you feel like you're never working because you love it so much and that is like the greatest advice ever that you can give because you do it every day you do what you love and it's just awesome yeah. so yeah. I'm, I'm really glad that you got to share your journey with us today um I'm gonna launch a quick poll for our viewers I haven't done this before so it might take me a second but <laughs> Let me see. Do you guys see a poll on your screen? Awesome. Okay. Um, so go ahead and take um, a couple seconds to fill out the quick poll. And yeah, thank you for joining us today, everybody. Um, don't forget to follow Cyper on our social media. We have Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Paraton also has um facebook and instagram and linkedin and then um this podcast will also be recorded and uploaded to our youtube channel so go ahead and check out our, our other cyber conversations there as well and thank you so much ritu again we really appreciated having you so yeah have a great night thanks for having me